career, 52 fights. 50 victories, including 41 big wins by knockout, and only two defeats with five world titles in four different divisions. He's the former mini flyweight champion, former light flyweight champion, former flyweight world champion, the reigning, defending WBA super flyweight champion of the world, Thomas y Caballeros de Managua, Nicaragua. Come on, Tocolotico. across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Alfredo Caballero, wearing black with blue and officially weighing in the same at 114.8 pounds. His professional record, outstanding with 43 fights, 41 victories, including 28 knockouts, only three debates, and he has two world titles in two divisions. He's the former flyweight World champion and now the reign defending WBC super flyweight champion of the world, Thomas de Caballeros de Puerto Peñascos de Nora Mexico, El Dario, Juan Francisco Es aquí. Está un poco alto este tío. Bájalo un poquito, que está un poco alto. Win, eight years four. Juan Francisco Estrada, El Gallo, el Chocolatito, part two. Estrada throws the first punches of the fight. He wants to be first and be last, he said. And Estrada coming off more aggressive now. He's not coming off boxing and punching like he normally does. He's pushing back Chocolatito, making a statement here in this first round. It's Mexico versus Nicaragua. It's a master boxer puncher in Estrada versus a master at cutting off the ring in Gonzalez. Their first fight was at 108 pounds. Chris, this is at 115. What difference will that make? Well, it makes a huge difference. To get to 108 back in 2012, Estrada had to starve himself over the final days of that week. Couldn't even drink water over the last two to make 108. Now, he's at his most comfortable fighting weight, whereas you can see Chocolatito, the smaller fighter in this weight class. Eddie Hearn, who took a lot of pride in making this fight happen, said, if this fight isn't exciting, I might have to retire. That's how confident he is, and most of everyone you speak to is, that this fight will be fantastic. You know, it's, re it's remarkable. In 2012, the fight between these two took place in the Los Angeles Sports Arena. Gonzalez was fighting for the third time as a pro in the U.S. Estrada making his U.S. debut now. We've got the unified championship on the line and one of the biggest fights of the year. Will this be a slow burn type of fight or will it catch fire early? It'll catch fire early. There's no way it doesn't because it's a high aggression from Gonzalez. He's always, he's calculating with his aggression, but he's always shifting, always moving his head, always in position. instances of head bumps, so you're gonna watch for that. Round two, Chocolatito in the blue trunks with the gold waistband. Estrada in the black and blue. In the first fight, Estrada started off boxing nicely, but then little by little, it was Gonzalez who started putting the pressure, and that's what he's great at.
Gonzalez does have something of a history of being a slow starter. He was slow to start in the Estrada fight. His last fight, Israel Gonzalez kind of won that first round against Chuck Lopito. He just builds and builds and builds and wears his opponents down. Latino didn't respond to Estrada's, I wouldn't say he was taunting, but he was definitively telling everyone on the list that he was going to beat Chuck Latino and probably knock him out. I said, Chuck Latino, please tell me something mean about El Gallo. He said, I can't say anything. That's how nice of a guy he is. But in the ring, he becomes a terror. Good body shot from El Gallo, shot from El Gallo and then there's Chuck Latino answering with a... Pressure is what makes Gonzalez great. Oh, Gonzalez great. Oh, good glancing right hand again from Chuck Latino. That's that straight right hand that is one of Gonzalez's signature punches when he put Cal to five down a year ago. Estrada works best when he's at the end of that left jab, whether it's a hook, an uppercut, or a jab. Fight behind that jab, keep the distance. Estrada closed as about a two-to-one favorite in this fight. It's calculated aggression and angles that Chocolatito's great at. He shifts without you even knowing. Next thing you know, he has an angle and he's punching from a different from a different position. Nice right hand again for Chocolatito in a combination. to keep moving and you have to keep throwing punches if you're going to fight and beat Gonzalez. We saw in the first fight, Estrada seemed to run out of gas in those middle rounds. He told us he even thought, thought about taking a knee in that sixth round. You have to be able to keep up with Gonzalez's pace. Gonzalez has Estrada up against the ropes momentarily. And if you notice about Chocolatito, he doesn't pull back his punches. It's from his chin to opponent's chin. to it for round two. Believe it or not, Chocolatito told us this fight feels like any other fight. I treat them all the same. I don't think Estrada has the same sort of outlook. He knows what's on the line for him, his career, and his legacy. He said legacy Todd, Chuck Latitos is secure. He is a first bound Hall of Famer whenever he retires. But what he can gain in a fight like this is he can establish himself as a truly great 115 pounder. We know he's great at minimum weight, at 108, at 112. He's got some good wins at 115. This to me would make him a great 115 pounder. Not to mention he rose from the ashes after being beaten comprehensively by Sorungasai. Many people thought his career was over, but as he's showing right now, it is not. Estrada's doing a good job backing up and countering Chocolatito's aggression right now. The, ref, the judges here in Texas have shown us, though, tonight, they put a premium on aggression. And that's what Chocolatito does so well. He knows how to dissect his opponents with that right hand to the gut, coming up with a left uppercut. When Estrada's fighting at the end of the jab like that, he's a master boxer. He has the rhythm, the timing, the distance. It's up to Chocolatito to close that distance with his own rhythm, moving his upper body, getting inside, shifting positions, and landing his combinations. The more 
more extreme this fight gets, the more comfortable Chocolatito gets. Keep calm in the chaos. That's what Chocolatito has made a career of. In the first fight, any time Estrada got against the ropes, that's when Chocolatito got off. Always pressing forward is the Nicaraguan. There's that right hand to the body right there. A little bit low. Straight right. Straight right. Straight, right. Straight right, and he doesn't even pull it back. Like I said, it's from his chin to the opponent's chin. Doesn't load up. Just precision punching on Chocolatito. Now Estrada on the front foot. Unified Super Flyweight World Championship. Have it scored through three. Got a two rounds to one in favor of So I thought the first round, clear win by Estrada. Second round, I thought Gonzalez edged it in the third. I thought that was more clear for Gonzalez. Good uppercut. And now they're opening up. For Chocolatito. Chocolatito is an expert at creating openings with his body, with his shoulders, with his forearms. That's how he that's how he becomes so aggressive, but it's calculated aggression. He uses his whole body. For the first three rounds on average. There'll be more in this one. And this is what Chocolatito does. He forces you to fight his fight. His strong start off boxing. He's a master boxer. This is Chocolatito's fight right here. Pinpoint punches. Their last fight, they combined to throw over 200, or 2,000, excuse me. Might be headed towards a similar number here tonight. Nice angle taken there by El Gallo. It's a nice angle that Gallo did right there, but that's, that's also what Chocolatito does. He shifts without you even knowing. He shifts while he punches. He adjusts and gets a different side. Right for Chocolatito stepping in. Oh, again, a combination. 
Ovation for Roman Gonzalez. It's an unexpected combination right there. Instead of coming with a one-two, he led with a two and landed that jab, that hard jab, long jab. And now Gonzalez warned for the low blow. Look how crafty Chocolatito is right there. Barely moving his head, making the Strata miss. Maintaining his position. Crafty greatness right there by Chocolatito. Boy, these rounds are flying by. One coming forward when he fought well against Sor Rungbasai, that's what we saw. An aggressive Estrada dictating the pace of the fight, not so much in this one. I think the more aggressive Estrada is, the more at home Chocolatito will be. I love the fact these guys aren't pulling punches, either is our translator, verbatim <laughs> translation there in the corner. The thing about aggression, Chris, is it's not just like Chocolatito's coming forward without moving his head. He's, he's shifting his feet, his body, his own. He uses his entire body to create position to land the short shots. Very difficult to defend against. Chris, how do you have it scored through five full rounds? I've got it four rounds to one in favor of Roman Gonzalez. That's not to say that Estrada hasn't been doing good work. He has. I just like the aggressiveness of Chocolatito. And there's just cleaner shots being landed in these exchanges. Estrada's getting his punches in, but Chocolatito seems to be landing just one or two more, just like that. A very motivated Chocolatito tonight. Tito's punch output has slowed down. Estrada con concentrating on the body now, which is what you should do with an older, older fighter like this. And something's bugging Gonzalez's eyes. A good round here for El Gallo. Estrada, then an uppercut. Chocolatito answers back. This is El Gallo's fight right here. Punching backwards, getting the nice counters. Go, oh, big left hand for El Gallo again as Chocolatito opens up. Right cross from Chocolatito. Estrada with the left again. What a round here, round six. Gallo Estrada fighting this fight, not letting Chocolatito close the distance. Rhythm and timing is how Estrada does best. The body shots in this round. We're excellent for Gallo Estrada. He invested. Oh. Round seven, scheduled for 12 here at the American Airlines Center, downtown Dallas, Texas. And this fight has really begun to heat up. A very entertaining round six. Both these guys have proven that they can be really effective in the later rounds, especially recently. Joaquin Latito knocked out Cal Yafai in the ninth round. Estrada knocked out Carlos Quadras in the 11th. This is the second half of the fight, six rounds to go. The first half of the fight pretty much seemed to belong to Latito. Can Estrada make that pendulum come in his direction? Oh, a big wind-up right hand that connected. In the first fight, this is exactly when the, the tie changed for Chocolatito in the middle round. Oh, 
seemed like a sense of urgency. To see him, seeing from Chocolatito, the craftiness, the greatness. It's a little behind right now because the strata's not giving him that. He's stepping back. Chocolatito fighting back. Fighting right in the middle of the ring, back and forth. Oh, nice uppercut from Roland Gonzalez in a straight right for Estrada. And this is Chocolatito, what should be his fight right here. He's comfortable in aggression. Great combination by Estrada. This fight is looking exactly how he thought it would look. Has uh, landed the better shots than Chocolatito. He's not as aggressive as he normally is. He's a crafty, aggressive fighter coming forward, picking shots with all of his combinations. But Estrada's landing the cleaner, harder shots in my opinion. Took from Chocolatito. In the last round, these two fighters combined to land 95 punches. Nice left hook from Estrada. Estrada just missed with a big right hand right there. Let's take a look at Chris Mannix's scorecard through seven full rounds. Oh, the gap has closed after those last two rounds. Gave the last two to Estrada, dictated the pace, landed the cleaner shots, did great body work. This fight really can swing like a pendulum one way or the other at any point in time. Estrada doing a good job keeping Chocolatito at the end of his punch. It's hard to see because of the lights, but there are very distinct portions of this crowd that have been standing on their feet since the opening bell. They have not sat down. Estrada backing up Chocolatito now, which is something that we didn't see in the first fight. You're Estrada, that's where you want to be. Make Chocolatito the counter puncher in this situation. I don't think we saw Chocolatito back up or get near the ropes in the first fight. Estrada being very comfortable, pushing him back. Well, this is what Estrada said this week. He believes that his strength is going to be the difference maker this time around. At 115, he feels he is the stronger, fresher fighter. He is three years younger than Chocolatito. Leading into this fight, we knew that Estrada was going to be favored you know, physically because of his age, but the old, older legend is favored tactically. Left hook there from Chocolatito right on the chin. Toughness and tenacity is what makes Chocolatito, but we haven't seen that the second half of the fight just yet. Two world-class uh, fighters giving us another world-class fight. Round nine, scheduled for 12. A rematch eight years in the making. The momentum seems to have shifted towards the Mexican Estrada. Just don't stop punching. On pace to throw over 2,000 punches combined. Oh, 
Chocolatito, though, Chris, seems to have slowed down a little bit. He has, and this is the distance that Estrada wants to keep the fight at. He doesn't want that phone group type of fight that favors Chocolatito in those exchanges. You give a little bit of distance, Estrada's the longer, taller fighter, better opportunities. Compu box punches through round eight. 777 thrown by Estrada. 824 by Chocolatito. The accuracy of Chocolatito is something that's changed since that first fight. The first fight he landed 30% of his punches. Power, jabs, all of it. Last few fights he's been right around 30, 35% with that, that accuracy. Estrada ranked number nine in Chris Mannix's pound for pound ratings. He'd certainly move up in the list with a win tonight over this legend. Yeah, if you're talking Tito, you get back on that list, I believe, with a win. You believe you make the list. Not everybody's list. Chocolatito finding his rhythm now, finding his combinations. The accuracy is returning to Chocolatito. Chocolatito has been in this position so many times over his career. No panic. Knows what is required. And that left hand did the trick there. And another short shot from Roman Gonzalez. And this is the pressure that fighters have a hard time keeping Chocolatito off. Non-stop punches just like that. Good one-two from the Nicaraguan. Another super fast round as we approach 10 seconds. Ah. A bit more dire than you would think in the corner of Estrada, Chris. Yeah, I have Chocolatito up by one point. Oh, it certainly feels like anybody's fight with three rounds to go, but I can understand the mindset of the corner. These rounds have been close. Chocolatito has been the aggressor. You have really got to go out and try to definitively win these final rounds if you're a strong. They said you might need a knockout. It wasn't just win the rounds. It was knock this guy out. I disagree. I don't think he's there yet. Many people predicted a late stoppage for Estrada, maybe an 8, 9, or 10th round KO. Will that still be in the cards? This is Chocolatito's fight right here. Varying his attack and his speed. That's where Estrada doesn't want to be against the ropes, because that's where Chocolatito gets off his combinations. Let's start to the round again for Chocolatito. To the body with the right. And that's his money punch. That's when you know he's comfortable, when he throws that right out to the body and starts the combinations from there. And Sergio, could that advice from his corner where they said you may need a knockout, can that actually hinder their fighter? Maybe Estrada's looking to load up for one power punch. Possibly, but I don't think that was the, the right advice to tell you, Chief. This is a close fight. It, it could be fight for either way. Good left hook for Gallo. By telling your fighter that Gallo is forcing to, to come forward and, and, and fight Chocolatito's fight, the aggressive fight. It really is fun to watch Chocolatito. I mean, he was one of the best fighters from 2010 to 2020. Here we are in 2021, and he is looking like one of the best fighters in the world still. Counter right hand for Estrada. It's those short shots right there that make Chocolatito so great. They're hard to stop. They're uppercuts, they go down, and then he shifts positions, gets an angle, buries his attack and speed. Would you like to see Estrada go back to the body more? I, I think Chocolatito just firing, he's firing away. He found his home now. This is the aggression that Chocolatito feels comfortable with. 
a really good round for Chocolatito. Non-stop punching. It's been the calling card of Chocolatito for his entire career. Said he started fighting when he was 14 years old. And now we get set for the championship rounds. More. They want more, and Chocolatito can always give more. Two rounds to go. The unified Super Flyweight World Championship hangs in the balance. Can Estrada get revenge? Or will it be Chocolatito who establishes and cements his legacy at both 108 and 115 pounds? Oh, a nice right from El Gallo. Is there still some late drama to be had here? This is Gallo's fight right now. A little bounce on the step. Fighting behind that jab. An educated left hand. And we know as well as Chocolatito is fighting, he can be hurt and he can be stopped. We saw that against Sol Run Kassel. this distance he's got to let his hands go a little bit more be patient chop at that body and then come back upstairs the counter right hand right on the ear of Mastrata Chocolatito has been busier this round Ooh, nice inside right hand for Chocolatito This is the fight that we're expecting right now. Both of them landing big shots now. I mean, how good is this? Beautiful boxing, guys. Beautiful boxing, I hope. To still be able to throw this many punches in round 11 is just incredible. It really is poetry. They make each other barely miss and come back with counter punches. It's a back and forth ebb, ebb and flow. Francisco Estrada may not have needed a knockout a couple of rounds ago. On my scorecard, he does need one, or at least something big in this final round. Chocolatito probably has the same mindset. Go forward, advance, throw punches. Told they have broken the 2,000 punches combined throw mark. Just what we expected. As good as it gets. Estrada and Chocolatito. I haven't seen Chocolatito hurt. Chocolatito hurt this one. Neither man's really been hurt. They'll be feeling it for days and weeks afterwards. And look at this. They're throwing caution to the wind. Humbled watching both these greats, I'm telling you. The subtle, the subtle greatness of Chocolatito is, is just, I'm in awe watching him.
Those short little shots like that. Doesn't pull back. Keeps Estrada in check. Chocolatito, as good as ever. Estrada may need something big here with under a minute to go. We know he's got the power to do it. Oh, and right hand from Chocolatito and another one. Hands are down for Estrada. He's welcoming these punches so he can counter. But right now it's Chocolatito on the front foot. The crowd is on their feet with 40 seconds to go. Chocolatito's going to exchange. Estrada's going to be ready to exchange right back. This is what Estrada wants. He needs openings.